Hello, everyone. Welcome to my new uh, series, aptly titled RuneScape Politics. And in this series, I'll be talking about like controversial subjects that are uh, happening around RuneScape. So certain things, certain updates that we'll be talking about, certain uh, problems with the game and stuff like that. So because this is a new series, I really ask for you guys' feedback. So if you can, just go ahead and comment down below uh, of what you liked, what you didn't like, what you think I can improve. And uh, I greatly appreciate that. I'm not just trying to get a bunch of comments and likes and stuff. I'm, tr I'm really trying to make something that you guys really enjoy. So without further ado, let's get on with it. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about obsolescence. And if you're not familiar with that concept, basically it's the idea of certain items or um, in, in real life, certain objects becoming obsolete. So let's make an example of an iPhone, for example. So when you buy an iPhone, you're buying the best technology that you can at the moment. But a few years down the road, there's going to be problems with the iPhone, uh, and it's going to cause you to buy a new one. So like, it can include the iPhone breaking, it can include uh, losing it, it can include a new model coming out, or even like the, the iPhone that you have becomes so old, the technology seems to be uh, no longer relevant. And so these are the idea, this is the idea of an iPhone becoming obsolete. And what that causes you to do is buy another one. And that's crucial to real life economics. And I'm gonna make a parallel with this to, to RuneScape in the sense that in EOC, as it is right now, you have a lot of updates that are gonna make other gear obsolete. So you're gonna make it to the point where uh, you know, Borrows was the best as it is in 2007, but then God Wars Dungeon comes out and it makes Borrows somewhat obsolete. And, uh, and then you go ahead and everyone tries to rush for full God Wars dungeon gear. And that's the sort of thing that's crucial to free market economics, basically, uh, in real life and in games, because it makes sure that items don't uh, drop in price over the long run. So although when you get to the point where God Wars dungeon replaces Borrows, obviously Borrows will go down in price uh, quite a bit. However, the new God Wars dungeon items are actually gonna be up in price. And so that's a very important thing for keeping a flow of money going around in the game. And so I really want to, in this series, uh, for this first episode, I want to talk about how the idea of obsolescence is not affecting uh, our RuneScape game in 2007. And that's actually going to cause a lot of problems with our economy and the way that our, our items work. So the idea of obsolescence is actually really crucial to uh, both a game and in uh, real life economics, and for a couple reasons. So obsolescence in uh, 2007 scape would be important to maintain prices. So you don't want it to get to the point where there's so many whips in the game that whips become to the point where there's so, there's so many of them, there's more than one per player. So the price will drop dramatically. And that's the sort of thing that we should try to avoid because in the real game, we don't have that sort of issue. Whenever a whip becomes so low in price, there's gonna be a new weapon that everyone's trying to get and that's gonna be the high value item. Uh, so it's really important that uh, we realize that maintaining prices is going to be really difficult without the idea of obsolescence. Uh, another thing it is, is it allows for more circulation of money. So when your gear becomes obsolete and uh, you have to buy new gear, obviously that's going to increase demand. And basically the idea of what we need to do is in the long run, this game is going to have a, a huge amount of supply and very little demand for the simple reason that like I said before, pretty much everyone, it's going to get to the point where there's one whip per player. Um, and there's going to be a lot of players that don't have 70 attack, and it's going to rise above that at a certain point. So when it gets to that point, the whip is going to uh, crash dramatically in price, even more than it already has. And that's the sort of thing that we need to sort of look at avoiding. Another thing that obsolescence does is it stops an abundance of an item becoming uh, from coming in the game. So like I was just saying with the abundance of whips, it would make if you, we implemented some idea to uh, increase obsolescence. It would make it so that whips are no longer this commonplace item that everyone has. Um, it would make it so that there's actually a lot of people going out and buying whips, and therefore a lot of people would want to go and increase the supply and sell them. Another thing it does is it allows for long-term merching. Now, in the short term, uh, there's not going to be much much of a difference in prices, uh, similar to the live game. But in the long term, for example, if you were to buy a whip right now and six months down the road, if we have no updates and whip is still the strongest weapon in the game, that whip is going to be uh, probably less than half of what it is right now, probably uh, even less, you know, 90% less than it is right now. And that's going to be a huge problem. Um, 
not only because there's going to be so many that everyone's going to have one, but also because it's no longer given, going to give incentive for people to go out and try to get them. Uh, there's going to be no reason to get your Slayer to 85 to try to get a whip and stuff like that. So it also ensures that high value items will maintain their place as high value items. In 2007 scape, that's really important for us because we have no updates in the near future, at least as, as we voted on, we have no updates to increase the, the gear of, um, of 2007 scape. And so that's going to be a huge problem because it's going to make it so that all the high level items for like dark bows, whips, and borrows loot is all going to be farmed dramatically because that's going to be the best, that's the high value items, that's the best stuff to go out and try to try to get and sell. And so for that reason, uh, there's going to be an abundance of high-level uh, items, and it'll actually lose their, lose their value. So it, far down the road in 2007 scape, there really won't be that many high-value items. Uh, Everything is going to be roughly you know, pretty cheap for everyone because there's going to be no reason to try to uh, increase the supply, and there's going to be very little demand as well because everyone will have their whip, and there'll be no point in having two whips. And so for that reason... Uh, there'll be too many high value items and they'll actually lose their value. Uh, the other thing it does is it lowers the dependence on having new players enter the game. Now at 2007 scape, I hate to be cynical, but I don't think there's going to be that many new players entering the game. I think if a, if a new person is turned on to runescape, they're not going to try 2007 scape, especially at first, they're going to go straight to the live game. And for that reason, uh, 2007 scape is kind of in a problem where once we all get our stuff, once we all have our skills and we have our accounts where we want them, there's going to be no demand for, you know, low level items or or even whips when new players get to 70 attack. It's pretty going it's pretty much going to remain stagnant. And um so that's a real problem going forward for 2007 scape particularly because EOC you don't really have that problem. You you have enough new players coming to the game where all the low value stuff and even the high value stuff uh, when those players get there are going to maintain their prices for the most part. And the last thing it does is it uh, lowers our dependence on new updates and new gear. So if we have an, a plan to create obsolescence for gear, it'll make it so that there's no longer um, a dependence on new gear. And so whips, for instance, if we decide that that should remain the highest level item, that should stay roughly high value if we create a plan of, uh, to, uh, to make them obsolete. And so that's something that I'm going to be looking at uh, through this episode to try to see what we can do to make sure that in the long run this game could sustain itself uh, with the economy and with prices of items. So one example of obsolescence that's already in 2007 scape would be to a certain extent borrows items. Now we all know that borrows items degrade over time after you use them enough and then they'll break and you'll have to go repair them. Now the reason I say to an extent uh, borrows items are a good example of obsolescence is because the cost to repair is still so minimal compared to how much the gear costs when it originally is bought. So even if we get to a point where most people have borrows gear, although it seems like a good idea that they would break and you'd have to spend money to uh, recreate it, it's not exactly what we'd be looking for because it's it's so minimal that we can still get to a point where everyone has Durox and even if it breaks, you only have to pay, what, 100, 200K max um, to repair it. And then you get to the point where th th there's so much Durox that Durox would actually lose value very rapidly uh, because there's no new players that want it. We all have one set. There's no reason to get another. And when our borrows degrades, all we have to do is go repair it for roughly one-tenth of what it costs to buy it new. Now... One example of obsolescence that really can't come into the game is for consumable items. Consumable items will always, for the most part, maintain their value, and that's because they're being used. So the important part is that items come in and out of the game. Now with armor and weapons, they don't come out of the game very often at all. And that's one of the biggest problems. With consumables, they'll go out of the game very quickly. If you buy a thousand lobsters, you'll eat them over a certain amount of time, and then you'll have to go buy a thousand more. And that's the sort of thing that maintains prices for consumable items. But for non-consumables, we're going to run into a problem where there's not enough of them ex exiting the game, and there's too many of them entering the game. So, for instance, really the only way that uh, items such as armor and uh, weapons can really leave the game is if you die and no one picks it up. Uh, because there's really no other way. If you're PKing, the other guy will pick it up and go and sell it. 
Um, in every other circumstance, the, the item is going to stay in the game. And that's really the problem that I'm trying to combat uh, with this episode specifically. So without obsolescence, uh, either from our gear breaking or from you know updated gear, prices are going to continually drop throughout 2007 scape. We're going to have a circumstance where whips are going to slowly drop and drop and drop all the way down until it gets to the point where everyone already has a whip. And so there's really no demand for new whips. And so that's going to be a huge problem down the road. Um, another thing is that certain skills, for instance, right now, Slayer is one of the best skills to earn money. Um, that's for the most part because no one has the items that they need. So rune boots, for example, a lot of people need rune boots. Everyone needs rune boots. Even, you know, Zerkers can use rune boots, uh, pretty much everyone except for one defense peers and Nishia peers. So rune boots, for example, are extremely expensive right now because everyone is trying to get their pair. However, down the road, when it gets to the point where everyone has their rune boots, there's really no way for rune boots to maintain their price. Everyone's going to have them. The only reason why uh, people would buy them is if they die with them or if they, they die PKing with them and have to buy a new pair, in which case the person who PKed them simply picked them up and now they they still have the rune boots. So that's kind of a real problem uh, for Slayer specifically, but the other skills such as, you know, consumable skills, so rune crafting, uh, herb lore, fishing, those skills are going to maintain really high prices because those skills, their items are going to be entering and exiting the game continually. And so that's the kind of thing that is going to turn into a problem further down the road is we're going to have a situation where consumable skills are far more valuable than uh, non-consumable skills such as Slayer, uh, crafting to an extent, and uh, stuff like this. So in order to maintain prices um, throughout the skills, both for consumables and non-consumables, there really has to be a plan for making armor and uh, weapons somehow exit the game or cause people to have to buy new ones um, for some other reason. And that's what we'll get into in a little bit here. Um, now, there's going to be a situation very soon, uh, probably within th by the end of the summer, in which there's going to be a flood of high-value items uh, like whips, and their price is going to go down dramatically. And obviously, this is just due to supply and demand, right? So we're going to get to a point where the supply is huge. Everyone's going to have a whip. The people who are camping Abbey Demons are going to have, you know, five, ten whips. And uh, there's going to really be no supply. There's going to be no new players entering the game trying to get whips. And there's going to be very little people dying with their whips and needing another one. Um, so this is going to inherently create a situation where high value items are going to drop. And we're going to basically get to the point where all high value items are roughly, you know, 300K, some, something cheap. And then consumable items are going to be the real expense, trying to buy runes, trying to buy uh, potions and stuff like this, because those are going to be constantly exiting the game. There's going to be uh, a demand and a uh, supply. And that's really important to economics is uh, this idea of obsolescence. And so now I want to go into some ideas that we can maybe create uh, so that we can create obsolescence in 2007 scape like it is in EOC, because we're going to find that the economy is going to be uh, detrimentally affected dramatically because of not having obsolescence. I mean, a lot of people think that the GE was one of the biggest economic killers, but I think this uh, concept of obsolescence is actually way worse for our economy, uh, simply because it messes so much with supply and demand. And it's not as uh, directed as at merchanting. It's more directed at going out and getting certain items and weapons through skills. Now, this gets us into the part where we can start, you know, crafting theories about which way we should go about creating obsolescence in this game, because it's going to get to the point where we're going to see that we need uh, such a concept of, as obsolescence, because it's literally going to get to the point where every item is going to be roughly equivalent in value, and there's going to be very little reason for people to train things like Slayer. And so all of these fixes are going to be not very not enjoyed by a lot of people because you're in the only way to create obsolescence is to make gear uh become somewhat uh ineffective and not as strong as as it is right now um but we'll see in the long run that that's actually good for economics for instance if you're trying to buy an item that's uh one mil and you don't have that kind of money it's going to get to the point where trying to get that money 
is only done through consumable skills. So rune crafting, herb lore. Because if you go and try to get Slayer, you try to get that one mill through Slayer, it's not going to be very effective. You're going to be getting very cheap drops. No one's going to be buying your drops. And making money is going to be way harder. So even though it seems like, oh, I don't want my items to go to waste. I don't, I don't want my items to get worse than they are. We need to look at the fact that it, it works the other way around too. When you're trying to make money, you need items to maintain their value. So there's a couple of ways in which I've come up with to sort of add obsolescence. And really with this, I'm just trying to uh, pass ideas out there and try to see if any of you, what you think about it, what you, uh, what you think might be wrong with it. Um, so I'll go through them one by one. The first one would be add a breaking time to non-consumables. So all non-consumables, you know, rune armor, weapons, stuff like that, would have a breaking limit. And so when it breaks, you can either have it like borrows um, in the case where you have to repair it uh, for a certain amount of money. However, I don't think that's very effective for the reason why I said that borrows isn't exactly an obsolescence issue. Um, simply because the money that you're spending to repair it is nowhere close to the money that it costs to get it. So we're still going to get to the point where everyone has their item. And when it breaks, rather than buying a new one, you're just going to repair your old broken one. And so it's not really going to fix the problem. So in a sense, what I, what I would think needs to happen would be when they break, they break somewhat permanently, or you need uh, certain materials to fix them. Like if your rune plate breaks, you need three rune bars or, or something to fix it. And um, so that's something that's really important. Uh, that's one idea that we can throw out there um, for creating obsolescence in our items. Another idea is to allow for upgraded equipment, obviously. Uh, in EOC, you don't have this problem uh, because there is obsolescence throughout the game. You're going to get to a point where even though you grinded out the money to get your, you know, Torva, it's going to get replaced by Drygore armor pretty soon. And so that's going to inherently create obsolescence, and that's what keeps the economy of EOC, even though it is a pro pretty broken economy for other reasons, but that's what keeps those high-value items to maintain their high value. If it was a situation where Drygore came out and Drygore was the best stuff for four years, there's going to be no way that that's going to maintain its high value price. It's going to become very, very cheap. And so that's the kind of thing. Now, this isn't my favorite example or my favorite uh, way to fix it because I don't think that we should be updating uh, 2007 Scape for new items. I don't think that we should introduce God, War, God Wars Dungeon, for example. And so that's not really my favorite way, but that would be a way to create obsolescence in the game. Now, this is probably the most controversial idea that I had, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Um, this idea involves resetting 2007 scape, either all the equipment and money and gear and all that, you could reset all of that so everyone starts blank, or you can reset gear, money, and stats. Now, I would think that the stats part people would really be against. They don't want all their time to go to waste. However, I think it's it would be a really good thing to sort of reset items every once in a while. And so that would decrease uh, the supply, obviously. So all the items that exist would go away, and we'd need to recreate the items in the economy. Now, if you guys remember at the beginning of 2007 Scape, it was a pretty rough economy in the sense that items were constantly fluctuating in price because you didn't know how many of them there were and who all had them, and you just try to buy it to get, to get it. And so... Although this will kind of hurt the economy for the first week, week and a half uh, that it comes out, if we don't reset stats, it's going to be very quick for people to recreate an economy, for people to start making those rune, those full rune sets, for people to go and get some borrows items and all that. So that's one way of creating obsolescence, obviously, and that would make it so we maintain really a really good economy. Um, throughout the game. However, a lot of people, I can I can tell that a lot of people won't like this idea simply because it, it's all your hard work gone to waste in a sense where you, you're, all your items that you've worked on for a couple months will be reset. And uh, I can see it being really, you know, uh, detrimental to people's motivation to play the game. They won't feel like they're actually doing anything because they'll realize in two months all their stuff's just going to get reset. However, it's going to make it so that four or five years down the road, if we're still playing this game, if it's possible to still be playing this game, there's going to still be a strong economy. Uh, whips are still going to be very expensive because they will have been reset. And so this is one way that we can create obsolescence. Now, the last idea that I had um, 
isn't as controversial, but it is kind of kind of interesting in the sense that it, it's never been done before. But one thing we can do is increase the high alka value for all high value drops. So, for instance, right now, uh, whips alk for very cheap. I think it's under 10k even, or it's or it's right around 10k. If you were to make whips alk for, for instance, one mil, you would never see whip prices drop below one mil for the simple reason that why would you sell it for 900k when you could alk it for one mil? And that would make it to the point where you're pretty much artificially setting the price of a whip. So there's no way for the whip to go below one mil. Another thing that's doing is giving incentive for people to elk items like that to uh, to make sure that they leave the game. So there's not going to be an abundance of high value items. They're going to be able to actually enter and leave the game just like consumables. And so we'll have a point where further down the road, when we go years and years down the road, there's not going to be this abundance of items that I'm worried about. And we're going to be able to create obsolescence through alking. Now, all of these examples uh, obviously aren't the best things. Uh, they don't seem like very good things to us in the, sh in the short term because that means that either our items are going away, our items are breaking, all this stuff doesn't seem like very good things. However, down the road, I want to I make sure that you all realize that down the road, money making is going to be a very different concept than it is today. It's not going to be slayer and borrows for items or for money. It's, it's mostly going to be consumable skills uh, such as fishing, rune crafting, herb lore. These sort of things are going to be really where the money's at because there's going to be a constant demand for those sort of things. One reason, for example, why prayer potions are so expensive right now isn't because renards are hard to get. They're actually really easy to get. The reason why is because prayer potions are used by everyone all the time. And so you have a constant uh, exiting of prayer potions of the game. So the game is not going to have an abundance of prayer potions because we're all using them consistently. And that's the sort of thing that we need to think about implementing for armor and weapons as well if we want to create a sustainable economy for this game. So those are the ideas that I had for creating obsolescence in RuneScape. And so I want to thank you all for watching. If you liked any of the ideas in here, please, please comment down below. Uh, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. And because I really want to make this series something that we can all learn from and sort of create a discussion in a sense where we can all decide on the fate of the game. Now, I want to uh, make sure that you all realize that this isn't something that I'm trying to fight for actively. It's just something that I'm trying to put out there and try to try to get attention to so we could start thinking about certain ways we can mitigate the damage of, of stuff like this happening. And I'll definitely make sure that I continue this series. So uh, thanks a bunch for watching, and I'll see you next time.